Uh, and now let me introduce you to a few members of our amazing core team. Please welcome Antonin from Nancy. <laughs> Benjamin from Paris. Albert from Barcelona. Simone from Rome. And Francesca from Munich. Thanks for them. Hi everyone. Um, we are very proud, very proud uh, to be here, and we are very proud to start this WeShare Fest by sharing with you our vision of the collaborative economy. And so the team, uh, Simone, Benjamin, Albert, Francesca, and me, uh, for 20, 25 minutes, we are trying. We're going. To, we're going to be short because we're already out of time. Uh, but that's fine. Uh, so we're going to share our vision of the collaborative economy. So we will start, let me start please, with a story. This girl is Julia. Julia was born in 2000 and she's now 25. Yes, you guessed right. She's, we, are, we are in 2025, we are in the future. And I'm going to tell you a normal day in the life of Julia. It's, it's 8 a.m. and Julia woke up very early this morning. She woke up in a, in a house she didn't know, in a city she, di she didn't know. Um, sometimes she rents a house, a place, sometimes she swaps it. In the city she lives, already 60% of the people Already 60% of the house, already 60% of the, of the flats are shared or can be used on a temporary basis. It's 9 a.m. and Julia is having breakfast. And while having breakfast, she's checking her personal data dashboard. She's checking her personal data dashboard where she can, she can find a lot of information. A lot of information she's been sharing with her friends, with people she, she trusts. On, on this dashboard, she can find also information about her accounts, her several accounts. Actually, Julia has 15 different accounts. She has accounts in euros. Yes, euro is still there in 2025. <laughs> uh, but she also has accounts in local currencies. She has three or four. She has accounts in bartering currencies. And she also has several accounts in reputation currencies. She wanted to check her personal dashboard because she's going to do shopping today, and it's fine. She's, she's going, she has enough local currencies to be, to, to be able to go shopping today. It's 10 a.m., and Julia will go pick the food she bought online, and she will go pick the food she bought online to Open Place. What is Open Place? Open Place is an old supermarket that when bankruptcy in, in, in the year 2020, just like several supermarkets that went bankruptcy in the year 2020. She's going to, to open place which became a co-working place, but not only a co-working place. It's also a fab lab, it's also um, a peer-to-peer -peer learning space. Actually in this space a lot of things happen uh, which generate uh, social capital. So, uh, actually, Open Place has been uh, uh, multiplicating all around the world, and now you can find Open Places in every single neighborhood in the world because Open Place is an open format, so it has been replicating by many people around the world. At Open Place, she's going to learn how to cook a new meal. She's going to give a class about how to uh, build objects in tools using 3D printers to kids. She's going to do a lot of things. She's going to have a lot of fun. She's going to meet a lot of people, learn a lot, and uh, meet, meet her friends. It's already uh, five in the evening, and it's time for Julia to leave open place. So she lives in the street. She goes in the street, and with her glasses, G7, she can find uh, trustworthy people in the streets to share a ride. Yeah, because 
Everybody shares rides. It's so it's very normal. Not like nobody uh, drives alone in the city. So actually, she's just looking with her glasses in the city, and she finds Michael. Michael seems seems very trustworthy. She's because a uh, reputation score is pretty pretty good, and uh, he also has the same you know same taste as 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 Julia. So she's like, okay, I will share my ride with 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 Michael. So she's now back. In, 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 her, in her place, it's already nine in the, in the evening, she's having dinner, and she's wondering what I'm going to do this evening, and just like many evenings in the life of Julia, tonight she's going to read a book, a book in paper. So, I hope you enjoyed this travel in the future. So now let's get back to the present. Um, I think if we are all gathered here today, it's because we all share something. We all share the, the um, conviction that a major change is underway, that um, there is a new kind of collaborative and peer-to-peer -peer economy which is emerging that puts people in touch together to produce differently to consume differently and to do a lot of uh, new uh, things in a very uh, distributed and collaborative way. And that uh, can be seen basically, if I can switch. It happens sometimes, it's okay. Now, and, and this can be seen uh, mostly in, a, in a several uh, forms. For instance, collaborative consumption. It's using internet platforms and offline interactions for people to connect online and in order to share offline, to share resources, to share knowledge, to share skills, to share time, to share their car, their apartment, money, and so on. You can take the maker movement is also another uh, idea in this area, which is using new kind of digital tools, new kind of places such as Fab Labs, and new kinds of platform to share knowledge and applying the open source collaborative principles but to fabrication and to physical stuff. You have peer-to-peer -peer finances and crowdfunding who are new ways to finance and to fund your projects using um, this platform for creative people. You have open knowledge, open science, open government. So we are going to introduce you to some of the ideas uh, in this area. Five ideas basically, collaborative consumption, the maker movement, um, the micro entrepreneurship, the reputation economy, and cities as a platform for this new economy. So I'm going to let Albert start with some numbers. Thank you, Ben. So you, you've already seen the future. Ben framed the whole thing. I'm going to be the pragmatic guy giving you some numbers. Uh, the sharing economy is growing very fast. It's growing so fast that recently the Economist uh, devoted the cover and two articles inside uh, to, the, to this subject. The conclusion of one of the articles was it's, it's time to start caring about sharing because this is growing very, very fast. Let me start asking the audience, how many of you have er, ever worked from a co-working space? Okay, oh, oh. <laughs> that's around 75%. So we have now around the world, the last estimation is 2,500 co-working spaces, and we are adding around four to five new spaces every day. This is really booming. Another thing that people are sharing is accommodation. I'm sure you are all familiar with Airbnb and their annual report from 2012. They presented uh, uh, 300,000 300, rooms. The most important fact is that they are, uh, achieved this number in just five years. You need to compare that with the largest hotel chains in the world, which have more or less double the number of rooms, so around 650, 670,000 rooms, but it took them 60, 66 years to reach the number. So you see the speed that, uh, at, the, at the speed that Airbnb is growing. Another very popular service in Europe is ride sharing. We have more than two million people doing ride sharing every month in Europe, and we are adding 150,000 new users every month. Crowdfunding, this is a funny project of a, a grilled Jesus that happened, uh, that was in, in Kickstarter uh, last year. It was $25,000 they managed to, to pledge. But the total amount uh, that has been calculated for the crowdfunding last year 
was a little bit above two, uh, no, sorry, two billion, uh, 2.7 billion. And the most important fact is they expect to double this year. Also, on the, on the money side, we have peer-to-peer -peer lending. The two largest uh, sites in the US, in the last six years, they've managed to transact 2 billion US dollars. But in the next six months, they already expect to transition another billion. But better than bore you with more figures, it's better to see the graphics. You can see here a clear trend. All these services, when they manage to reach the, the critical mass, they have exponential growth. I'm not a big fan of growth, to be honest, or I used not to be a big fan of growth, because in the traditional economy, when you see graphics like that, it means that we are using more and more and more natural resources, and this is where, why we are having such big climate problems. But in the sharing economy, when you see this kind of graphics, it means more people sharing, more people being smart. So uh, it's, we welcome this kind of graphics, and we will hear a lot more about that these days. So uh, it's not the first time that we see these disruptive uh, numbers in, in the web. And in the, uh, for, ex for example, if we think to publishing, and you just look at the WordPress website, WordPress is just one of the blogging platforms around. It's the, the most beloved one. And it's like powering 65 million blogs. So I would ask you, uh, how many of you uh, run a blog or have a blog or participate to uh, publishing a, a blogging platform or effort? Just raise your hands. OK, it's just like the 50%, something like that. And if I ask you now, how many of you did, uh, did, did something like that uh, 10 years ago? Okay, you, you were like a, um, a very advanced guy, so it's like six or seven percent, yeah. So if you look at this, maybe not many of you are familiar with this uh, machine. This is a RepRap 3D printer. Um, it's just one of the version of this uh, printer. It's, it it's basically has been derived and mixed and, uh, and there are um, hundreds of variations. Uh, so I would ask you now, how many of you did, uh, did use uh, a 3D printer in, in your life? Uh, how many of you, sorry if I do that like this, but I don't see, so it's like six or seven pesos, maybe the, the, the same number of people uh, that were blogging 10 years ago. So this means that uh, in, in 10 years or maybe very, uh, in, in, in even less, uh, thanks to things like Fab Labs that are growing organically in all over the world. Fab labs are uh, laboratories where you can uh, experiment with uh, digital publication and you can sync up with each other, with the others and uh, team uh, up uh, to, to realize your projects, to work on your uh, hardware ventures. So uh, thanks to Fab labs and thanks to things like crowdfunding that uh, actually Will, uh, will give the makers all over the world the possibility to raise capital to, uh, to empower their, their uh, ventures, you can really raise the bar. And you can even now think of uh, creating a, a, even a, an open source car, like Joe Justice uh, did in, in Seattle with the Wiki Spirit project. So when you have these kind of uh, tools, this kind of access, uh, you really need to start thinking of how to, uh, how to leverage on massive, large collaboration worldwide because we are all connected. And so this is what Wikispeed did and what our other projects are doing. This car has been created by 100 volunteers from all over the world in open source in three months. And the mass production alternatives are usually prototyped in seven years. So you see that when you take the experience that we measured on the web, like lean uh, startup or agile technologies, so uh, processes that are very, you know, very f forward thinking, and you take it and you apply it uh, in, the, in, the, in the manufacturing space, you can prototype a car in three months. And this is really you know, frightening for the incumbents. So that's, that's, that's why uh, now, um, for, I will give the, the word to Francesco, to Antonio. So, <laughs> so the, the makers movement that uh, 
Simone had just told us about and the sharing movement are making people micro-entrepreneurs. And I'm going to tell you in two minutes about the rise of the micro-entrepreneurship economy. Um, so I like this quote by Seth Godin. Uh, my dad had one job in, 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 his, in his whole life. Uh, I'm going to have seven jobs in my life. Uh, and my kids will have seven jobs at, at the same time. I don't have any kids, but I already have seven jobs at the same time. Actually, most of us at WeShare have many jobs at the same time. Some are entrepreneurs, consultants, dancers, actors, musicians, entrepreneurs, consultants. I even know somebody at WeShare who do everything at the same time. You, know, you see, seven jobs. Uh, and we don't do that because of recession. We do that because it's more fulfilling. We do that because it's more fulfilling and we also do that because it's never been so easy to create your own job. It's ne never been so easy to build your own dream, to create the world you want to live in. And this is possible thanks to the web. And this is a major change in our economy. So if you're passionate about something, you can create a blog, uh, become an expert in your field, and you will be given a lot of opportunities. If you have a car, if you have a house, if you have a flat, you can become an entrepreneur in a, in a minute. If you're a good cook, get people to come at your place, invite them, make some money if you want, or invite them, and you can also become an entrepreneur. If you have skills, share them, become a teacher. And all this is possible now thanks to platforms and thanks to the web. So the, the, the micro-entrepreneurship economy is, is, is linked to, to the collaborative economy and this is what, what, what basically the whole collaborative economy is all about. It, it's about uh, helping people to achieve their dreams and helping people and, and empowering people uh, to, to, to make the world uh, a better place. Thanks. And Francesca is going to, to tell you about how reputation is going to be so important in the future. So yes, as Antona just said, another important thing that is empowering micro-entrepreneurs is the reputation economy. And so that's why I'd like to tell you a small story about Stefano. Stefano is a photographer and last year when he was on vacation, his entire photography equipment was stolen. But he was able to get all of it back. And why? Because he has reputation capital. He was able to convince enough people in his network that trusted him and believed in his work to donate and support him to replace his whole equipment. So here you can see his online campaign where he was able to raise 5,000 euros in only a few weeks. Now today, a lot of people have lost trust in companies and governments. But at the same time, we're seeing that thanks to the power of the internet, trust between strangers and individuals is growing. It is this ability to build trust that is fueling the collaborative economy and it's empowering individuals over companies. How is it doing this? So here, um, yes, you can see the reputation economy. Um, so the way this is working is that everything we do on the web and all of our online ratings on peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces count towards our online reputation. But this reputation and our online behavior doesn't only matter on the web. It also has a real impact in our offline life. For instance, online profiles on LinkedIn, GitHub, Stack Overflow, or Quora may influence whether we get our next job. As you can see here, an employer seems to think that someone demonstrating his programming skills on GitHub is worth more than a resume today. And maybe soon, our eBay payment history will determine whether we get a loan. Now, as collaborative consumption advocate Rachel Botsman has said, in the future, reputation capital will determine who has trust, power, and influence. And it will also determine whether someone decides to hire you on a task and errand network 
to run an errand for them. Now all of, oh, okay, sorry, there's a slide missing, oh no. Okay, so all of these different mechanisms to display and express our online reputation are only the beginning. The next big challenge that we face in this decade is to find systems of trust that help individuals collect their reputation data and manage their online identities. And now I'm going to hand over to Benjamin, who's going to talk about the cities. Thanks. So we've talked a lot about internet in these last few minutes. And as we said before, what's very new and very powerful in this new collaborative economy is that it combines online and offline. It combines the power of internet platforms, internet networks, with offline interactions. And where does, does this interaction happen? Well, they have to be local. So the right size, basically, for the, this economy, the right scale, is the city. And what I want to, um, to insist on is that the fact that all these new models, collaborative consumption, the maker movement, and so on, they foster lo uh, local economies because they change the way we work with co-working, they change the way we eat with community-supported agriculture, they change the way we move with uh, car sharing and shared mobility services, they can change the way we produce, we make things with uh, local production, manufacturing, fab labs, and so on. And what we see is that there are more and more of a new kind of places that are emerging, new kind of spaces, of third places, places which are not really your home, which are not really your work anymore, but which are uh, in between. These are, the, these are the co-working spaces, these are the fab labs where you can meet people when there is uh, enough social friction between people to generate creativity, new ideas, new projects, um, and, uh, um, and this kind of spaces basically they are the epicenter of the catalyst of this new uh, collaborative economy because they help communities to develop and to create l new projects and to share. And next slide please. <laughs> and the last idea basically is no, we, sh we should think again about our cities, uh, about this new economy. Like, how can our cities become the platforms, become drivers, and can support this new collaborative economy? And obviously, this is a very new topic. There is a lot of work to do in cities and knowledge sharing between cities. And that's somehow what we want to achieve within WeShare, because some of you might be familiar with how WeShare is organized, but it's basically a network of local communities. We have people called, called the WeShare Connectors in Berlin, in Paris, in London, in Barcelona, in Rome, everywhere. And the idea is that these people, WeShare Connectors, they work to connect p the people from the collaborative economy at the city level, but also to work together to connect all these people across different cities for knowledge sharing, because, oh, you might have somebody in another city who's working on a similar project as you are, and then you should uh, share with, uh, with this person. So that's what we want to achieve. We're going to talk a lot about everything that we cov we've tried to cover very briefly in this introduction keynote. We have uh, three full days for it. So I really hope you will enjoy it. And uh, if you want to become a WeShare connector, well, just come and say hi. Thank you. And just one thing, because I, uh, b before I leave, Maeva uh, give, explain what's going to happen today. As, as Benjamin said, if you want to be a WeShare connector, you can just talk to us. It's very simple. But if you want to be a WeShare connector, you have to do something first. And if you think like what WeShare does is cool, you have to do something first. It's something we do all the time. So please do it with us. <laughs>